Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ethan Bernard. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Division 2 again. Yeah, I know. Sorry. This is like the third Division 2 video in a row. I've been having a really rough week this week, and I just kind of want to sit back, talk about the first week of the Division, and then next week we're hopping right back into YouTube. Full swing, variety, and all. So for now, we're going to talk about the Division 2 one week later. The story is over. Okay, most likely within the first week you'll beat the story. Note that the story was a genuinely fun experience. It wasn't super exciting, but it was really fun to play through the first time. They do get a little repetitive if you play the missions over and over again. But luckily, the only time you really have to replay a mission is when you're doing either the invaded version of it, which technically is a different mission, or when you're doing it for the daily, weekly, yada, yada, yada. Now, the story, I'm not going to say much. No spoilers or anything. It was fun. It, it, the missions were paced really well. It was really fun to play through. I wouldn't recommend playing the missions over and over again. It could get really repetitive very quickly, but it was fun, and that's all I'm going to say about it. The open world is amazing one week later, because after you beat the game, the open world evolves and is constantly changing. Honestly, the game feels like it's constantly just changing itself, which is an amazing feeling for a game like this. There's a constant fight between factions happening on the streets of DC after you beat the story. Control points are being fought over by NPCs. Invasions are happening, which change the entire environment and enemy type. It's a really cool dynamic, and I really enjoy how much the open world has to offer. You have this whole control point system where you can play side missions around the control points to level up their alert levels. And when it hits the max alert level, it's going to be really hard to beat, but when you beat it, you're going to get really good rewards. It gives you that balance of risk and reward and hot diggity damn. Am I really enjoying just kind of the dynamic of how they made the open world work? Now, the strongholds in the daily missions are kind of what I'm grinding right now. Because they have kind of these daily and weekly missions that you can replace strongholds and missions on higher difficulties to get guaranteed really high end rewards. Now, on top of those guaranteed rewards, you usually get way more. Just because playing at that higher difficulty, you're playing more challenging enemies that have a higher chance of dropping really rewarding loot. Now, this all ties into just how the end game works and the world tiers and all that just add to it. World tiers are engaging, but honestly, I don't really understand the system that much because they don't last that long. After you start the end game, you'll find that you'll very quickly go up in level and you'll pretty much be able to just play the missions and go up to the next world tier without much grinding in between. The real grind comes after hitting max gear score, but the fact that you have to play like all these invaded missions and strongholds is really cool in between the world tiers because it actually gives you another dynamic. The bosses you fight, the enemies you fight, the narrative happening all changes in the invaded versions of these missions and strongholds you have to play, and it is damn fun to play once you beat the original game. Now, the weird world tier system aside, the gear score actually works really well. Currently, the max gear score is 450. That's world tier 4. World tier 4 ranges from 375 to 450. And the only way to level up past 450 right now is to get field proficiency and conflict caches. I've been getting 454 items from these. It's kind of the only way to get above 450 until world tier 5 comes out. But damn, is it fun to play. Now, currently in the game, there's only three strongholds, so you're not going to be playing them a whole lot. You know, you can play them with friends, you can replay them, you'll get some good rewards from it, yada, yada, yada. But actually, they're soon releasing a fourth stronghold. Tidal Basin is a fourth Black Tusk stronghold that will actually open up World Tier 5. Now, of course, once World Tier 5 is introduced into the game, the max level will go from 450 to 500, and that's where the real grind starts. So once World Tier 5 releases, we're going to have weekly missions, weekly invasions, they're increasing the level cap to 500, a new stronghold will be out, gear sets are being added to the game, and a bunch more stuff. So whenever that kind of quality of life update releases, that's going to be huge for the actual end game. but that's kind of really all there is to say about it, because we don't much, know much more than that until they actually decide to release Tidal Basin and let us enter World 5. Now, I'd like to take a minute to kind of touch on the PvP and the Dark Zone in the Division, because both of these modes have something in common. Everything is quote-unquote normalized. So, gear variety and specializations make these modes much more enjoyable than what they were in the original game when we just kind of hopped in right away and started playing. I said in my first impressions video I got to play a match of PvP, and it was really inconsistent, but now it feels so much better now that I'm level 30. 
All of my specialization perks are going into effect. The gear variety is amazing now that I don't have to worry about just scrapping gear because it's not bad. The gear variety I have is really good. I have a couple snipers and shotguns and everything I enjoy using. And having that variety and just being able to choose whatever I want and having the specialization on top of that has made PvP a much more enjoyable experience for me. Now, the Dark Zone is also a really unique experience. However, I'm not really having a great time in it so far, and let me explain why. The Dark Zone is very difficult as a solo player. Given a lot of the loot you get in the Dark Zone this time around, I actually noticed isn't really contaminated. The only contaminated loot you find is when you actually take it off other players or you're fighting the actual little kind of strongholds. I forget what the name of the little controlled areas that you have to capture in the Dark Zone. Those give you contaminated loot, but whenever you open a chest or you get a supply drop, that loot goes straight into your inventory and it isn't really contaminated. So Dark Zone is a difficult experience in this sense that when you're playing alone, which I have most of the time, but I've brought one friend in a couple times, it is very hard to stay alive. Because honestly, as soon as someone sees you in this game, number one, most people are in squads. Which adds to the problem because I'm a solo player against a team of four. And on top of that, people are very mean. People are dicks in this game. The time to kill is pretty fast. So when you're just running around and someone sees you, they'll just shoot you most of the time. We have had a couple friendlies that will help us or revive us or something like that. And that's always really nice to see. But the majority of people, especially if it's more than one person, will see you and just shoot on sight. Which is very annoying. I wish that's not how the mindsets of these players worked, but it is right now and it's pretty annoying so dark zone is there it is fun to play but damn it is super annoying going in solo and just being farmed by a squad that hunts you down every time you spawn because that was the very first experience i had with dark zone i hopped in the day after actually ended up getting to go to some of the different safe points and get some loot and it was pretty fun but that that experience put a little bad taste in my mouth because i don't know why it would put a solo player in a server where there's a team of four rogues running around just killing everyone they see. Anyway, guys, overall, I've put a lot of time into The Division 2. I've been putting like eight hours a minimum a day into it so far. I've been enjoying it immensely, and I'm really, at this point, just kind of waiting for World Tier 5 to release. I don't want to complete a lot of the exotic quests before World Tier 5 comes out, because I'd like to get those items at the highest level possible. Anyway, guys, more videos will be coming soon, especially when World Tier 5 and Title Base and release. I'm really... Really excited to see how that comes out and start the actual grind for the end game and max level. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of the Division 2 down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave it a like. You know what to do if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. It's been a minute, but I'm in it to win, and I ain't finished. This is the starting gun, and I'ma run it to the front and tell them not the one, son. This is a rhythmic defibrillation, innovative old school to thrill the nation. I've been patient.